Hello, everyone. So today I want to talk about inflation because inflation impacts interest rates and interest rates impact real estate prices. So I just got this comment. The whole world is going through this killer inflation period. It will end soon and be better. Hang tight, y'all. And I replied, it would be great if inflation went down, but I wouldn't count on it. So there's a bit to unpack and dig into in my comment. Would it be great if inflation went down and things got cheaper? Yes. But the thing about that is there's going to be a lot of baggage. So let's look into that. So we can start with the good news. The good news is, is that generally the Fed funds rate, I'm going to be talking about the Fed funds rate. It's the same story with the BOC rate. They move together. So you can kind of interchange these ideas between Canada and the US and probably a bunch of other countries. But going back to this graph, the blue Fed funds rate generally had to go higher than the inflation rate, the CPI. And today isn't today. This is a while ago. This is last year. But the good news is, is that we did that. We managed that. The Fed's funds rate is higher than the inflation rate. So that's the good news, but it's the end of the good news. Now we get to the bad news. So we're going to start easy with the potential bad news. The potential bad news is that interest rates basically work on a 60 year cycle. 30 years down, 30 years up, 30 years down, 30 years up, 30 years down, 30 years up. We've had 30, 40 years down. We may have 30 or 40 years up. Not in a straight line like any of these are. You chop up and you chop down. We've been chopping down for many, many decades, but we're just maybe, maybe starting to chop up and we will see higher highs and higher lows in interest rates. So that's very bad news long term because that means a lot of downward pressure on real estate prices. It also probably means that inflation will trend up as well. And in this graph, you can see where we are now. It is possible that we trended down and maybe we are trending up higher highs. This is very speculative. We don't know if this is going to happen. Let's take a look at the short term. So again, short term, not great news. The base effects make it likely that the year over year headline CPI will bounce around between three to 4.5% through the year end. That means base effects the CPI is based on a year over year comparison. The inflation in real time is moving like this. It's moving up and down but it is compared to history and the history of inflation is also doing the same thing. So as it stands now, the impact of base effects is that we're probably going to see higher inflation. The other problem in the short term is that this recent lowering of inflation might just reverse. This is comparing the 1970s in the blue and it's overlaid with inflation now this is the united states this is the uk following along this is australia this is canada showing that inflation can go up and down and then back up again which could mean in the medium term we have bouts of inflation that we have to fight with higher interest rates and in the shorter term we have volatility in interest rates and inflation where they raise interest rates, they drop them, and then raise them back up. Raise them and drop them and raise them. And I think some people are hoping for something like this, where interest rates peak and then they just fall. Not something like this, where they raise interest rates and they keep them kind of high and then they fall. Or even this, where they keep them high, they basically pause for a while. But there's a problem with the hope that interest rates rose very quickly, very high, and then they're going to plummet. The problem is, is that every time they lower interest rates, it's because we have a recession. These gray bars are recessions. So when do they lower interest rates? It's when we have a recession. We have a recession, they lower interest rates. Recession, lower interest rates. Recession, lower interest rates. I think you're getting the idea. So unfortunately, people see this and think, oh, well, we'll have a recession, but interest rates will be low and everything will be great. My mortgage will go down. Inflation will go down. Everything will be cheaper. Everything will be awesome. There's a huge problem with that. And the huge problem is, is that when we have a recession, we have job losses. 
sometimes those job losses can be severe. And one of the interesting things is, is that the job loss between Canada and the U.S., many other countries, but between Canada and the U.S., it isn't a one-to-one -one thing. During the GFC, the U.S. in black here had much worse job losses than Canada here in the blue. And in the early 90s, the roles were reversed. Canada had the worst job losses, and America had less severe job losses. The thing is that the recessions line up between the two countries, other than the 2000 recession in the United States. But pretty much always, the recessions happen in unison, Canada, U.S. The interesting part is, is that when the U.S. had their big job loss event, the GFC, they had a housing crash. The last time we had major job losses, we in Canada had a housing crash. Throughout the 90s, we had a national housing crash and real estate prices in Canada stayed low throughout the 90s. So as you can see, it'd be great if just inflation went down and that's all that happened. But the thing is, when inflation comes down, Yes, the interest rates will come down, and that'll help some people, but the overall impact is a lot of pain, a lot of job losses. So hoping for inflation to come down is kind of a mixed bag. But what do you think? Do you think inflation will come down? Do you think we'll have a recession? Do you think we'll have job losses? Do you think the job losses will be worse in Canada or worse in the United States? Leave it in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.